My people, how y'all doing? Welcome to the first Liberian Worldwide interview where our goal is to push the country and the culture forward. Today, we are very, very excited. We have the man here, Quiddy Pay. Drew is ready with the selection. We're the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. The Indianapolis Colts select Quiddy Pay. Somebody who Liberian, like all of us, Went, went through what we all went through and was able to make a way for himself and to make it to the NFL. Quiddy, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. And thank you for coming, man. We really appreciate you being here. Um, you know, I know we all went through a lot of stuff and, you know, we've seen our people go through a lot of stuff. So it's important for us to have interviews like this where we can inspire the people back home, let them know what we're doing and, you know, what we, we, we aim to do. Right now, we're in Los Angeles, California. Home right. of Hollywood, you know, you got the lights, the camera, the action, but at the end of the day, we all have ourselves, you know, and what makes us truly us. So, I mean, my first question for you today, just keep it simple, you know, tell the people your tribe, you know, like represent. What tribe you from, my man? I'm a crown man. Crown? Yeah. And thank God, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. So, being crown, like, man, growing up uh, Liberian, where did you grow up, by the way? Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah. There's a lot of Liberians there. Yeah, and and in our community, uh, a lot of Liberians there, Nigerians. Uh, it was a good mix, but yeah, for sure. Okay, man. How how was that though? Like, was you were you more were you able to interact more with the Liberians, or how how you feel about that growing up? Oh, I mean, like you go to church, the oh. church Liberian people. So my my cousins, the the pastor was my uncle, you know, so. It's a very tight-knit um, community there. Okay. So how did that get you into playing football from there? So it was track at first. My, uh, my Omar ran track in high school, but mm -hmm. the kids in the neighborhood, they went and started playing football, and you know, all, of our, all of our friends were playing football. So by force, we made our Omar go and uh, join us up for, uh, for football. Okay. I, man, wait, wait, when you first tell your Omar, I playing football. What she said? How was the reaction? She didn't even know what the sport was to start with. But, <laughs> you know, then we started showing her. And then she started coming to practices and stuff. And at first, like you start from flag, but we was at the age where we went straight to the equipment. Mm -hmm. and I was bigger than most of the kids, so she was a rival with me playing football. But like my older brother, he was a little smaller for his age. So yeah, he was kind of like, scared? That. yeah. Yeah, because I know uh, I had a lot of cousins play football too, and I know one thing, the Omar nigga be scared when they see you get tackled. Yeah. Do your Omar still, you know, have some type of fears, you know, you playing professionally now? Yeah, to this day, you know, anytime I get injured or whatever, she always call my phone and just asking me hella questions. What preceded you to go to Michigan? Like, what was the, the choice in that? So, uh, being in Rhode Island, Providence is, uh, it's like, a, it's not really a football state. Uh -huh. So, a lot of college coaches don't go to Rhode Island to, you know, recruit and stuff. But um, there was a Boston College coach named Don Brown. He was the head DC at uh, BC. He went to Rhode Island for a couple of games, saw me play, and he offered me a scholarship. And then I was committed to Boston College for like a year and change, and then he went to Michigan, and then he offered me again, and that was like my best offer, so that was a no-brainer. I went to a, my official visit there. They played Wisconsin, I think it was a night game, and off the bat, I was like, they, they didn't know we am going to go to BC over, over this school. Over Michigan? Yeah. Well, so what, were there any librarians over there at Michigan when you was there? Nah, not, not at all. No. Know, so how did you feel once, once you finally got to college, especially growing up in Providence where you was around a lot of your people mm -hmm. and now you're in Michigan and you, you, your people ain't really there too much? Yeah, you know, it was it was lonely at first. And that's when I started to realize that, like, the Nigerian people are are out there. You know, they, they try to represent themselves as much as they can. For me, I feel like for Liberians, like, you got to, like, go and find them. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I try to rep represent the country well, but the other one, like, you got to, like, go and, like, really find them. Like, if you see in my bio, it says, I'm a crown man, you know, L-I-B, but, yeah. A lot of other librarians. I mean, even in L.A. here, where we are right now, you know, it's hard to find us. It'd be hard to you know, find. If, we not, if we not here. So yeah. that's important. I think that's one of the main reasons with this interview, our objective is to make sure that we are found and mm -hmm. our people know. Mm -hmm. So it brings me... So let's talk about some food, man. What's, what's some of your favorite soups and your favorite dishes? My favorite soups growing up are red oil, cassava leaf. Okay. 
palm butter. Okay. Um, you know, I was I was watching I was watching this one thing on uh, Instagram where or this one kid he brought uh, red oil because I was to school, and then the people in the comments like they were like I think they're from like Sierra Leone or like. Congo or something. They were like, "Oh, that's our soup. That's pundu, or that's <laughs> our soup. That's that's uh, something else." And, you know, the Sierra Leone people could call palm butter uh, granola soup. So you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the foods are the same, but we constantly always like fighting in what's uh, what's African culture. Like, "Oh, that's our food. That's our food." So, yeah. yeah. So if, so you, you name red oil cassava leaves. So that's yeah. that's your number one. That's my number one. That's your number one. Okay, okay. And then your number two will be like palm butter. Yeah. Okay, it's not too bad. Too bad. I mean, I feel like we don't give plow sauce credit though, man. Plow sauce is it's all right. It's it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Man, man, plow saw, that's my soup, man. So if anybody out there, y'all plow saw enthusiasts like me, <laughs> please, <y 'all. laughs> You can't be biased here, mm. but I, I want to ask you, which tribe do you think has the most beautiful girls? Most beautiful girls? I've, I've only really been around my, my own family, so. Mm, so crown, you going to say crown? Yeah, crown yeah. Come on, man. Give me my, give my, got crew getting in. <laughs> yeah. All of there. Um, but. The Basa, yeah. Yeah. So. Speaking of Basa, because I think this was supposed to be the answer for that, this question, but you might differ. So, who do you think in Liberia with the tribes got the biggest tumba? Basa, for sure. Basa. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's, it, Basa <laughs> girls, is, is, it's just inevitable. You guys win all the time when we talk about tumba. I don't know, I don't know what, what, what y'all tribe that y'all got, but y'all got it. You know, y'all got it. So, playing football now... Um, I know I've seen the documentary. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen that the NFL of Africa did on you. Mm -hmm. um, tell me more about that. Like, how did it come to pass? Like, how how was it to be able to share your story and yeah. to get it out there? Mm. So, for me, I try to I try to just represent the culture as much as I can. So, you know, a lot of people just knew I was proud to be a librarian, and then you know, people once you start playing well in college, they want to do a story on you or whatever. So. That was the first thing that I brought up was, you know, I'm proud to be a librarian. They started interviewing my mom and then that's when people started to know more about the librarian um, civil war and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and then from there, it just grew wings and flew. Yeah, I mean, that was dope and it was good for us to have that moment too. So I'm glad that you did that, you know, especially draft night, yeah. wearing the flag around. Draft night, y'all waving that flag, I had to. Yeah, man, that was that's important, that's important. So. Another librarian that played football was Tamba Ali. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, does Tamba have any impact on your career at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, just for me, like when people ask me who did I look up to in the NFL and stuff, like, I don't really have any idols. Uh, but, you know, someone that came from my culture that did well in the NFL, that's someone I could look up to. So Tamba for sure. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. Shout out to Tamba Ali, man, and yeah. everything he's done. So let's talk more about Liberia um, and just like culturally. One of the things that I feel like, you know, we kind of suffer with, like, is finding, like, our real true identity. Because mm -hmm. some people feel like we're traditionally African, but then others feel like, you know, most of our culture comes from, like, Southern America. How do you feel about that? I would say uh, we got our own culture for sure. Um, you know, the, the first couple of years of us being in the U.S., we definitely try to assimilate to, like, the U.S. culture and try to, you know, try to act American and, you know, we we try to spray our clothes with cologne because we ain't, we ain't like our uh, Oma cooking the beer on our clothes when we go to school and stuff like that. But as I grew up, I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm proud of who I am and uh, I'm proud of our culture. That's dope. That's really dope to hear. Um, like even further explaining that, like some people talk about our flag, you know, having it being so closely resembling to the American flag. Um, some some people feel like we should change it. Like, how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, it's it's a part of the history. Uh, you know, the some of the free slaves, when I, when I was talking to this one person um, a little while ago, they were like, oh, um, did you know how close American history is to Liberian history? Like, all the Liberian people, you know, came from descendants of slaves. And I tried to educate them, like, no, there were indigenous people of the land before, you know, the slaves came over from America. So, you know, I guess that's the part that's highlighted and that's the part that a lot of other people think about. But, you know, just how Christopher Columbus came and said he discovered America, you know, the free slaves of America didn't uh, found Liberia, so. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. Let's talk. Let's get into your, your personal life a little bit. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not much to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just tell us, man. So you grew up um, raised by your mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you was talking about something about the church. So tell us more about like the, the church experience. Yeah, I was I was raised in the church. You know, um, I didn't really meet. I didn't really talk to people that wasn't Liberian until I started going to school. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, every everything was rooted in the church. You know, all my mom's friends, Liberians, you know, she had coworkers that wasn't Liberian, but for the most part, like, raised around us, you know, raised by Liberians, you know, all of my aunts, you them, and yeah. Okay. Um, what would you say, like, after, like, you know, growing up in the church and then growing up around a lot of Liberians, when you did finally start hanging out with other people who weren't Liberian, like, what would you say was the, the biggest culture shock for you? that you was like, oh snap, y'all do this? The biggest culture shock? So I would say like, uh, I'm like middle school and uh, elementary school, I went to a public school in Providence and it was the inner city. So it was a lot of like black people, Hispanic people and um, yeah, black and Hispanic, Hispanic people. And then when I went to my high school, it was all boys Catholic high school. So it was a lot of white people. And for me, I was in that small number of black, kids that that went to school so I would say that was probably like the biggest culture shock that I had mm. was just going from being around like you know very diverse uh class and stuff like that to you know being around majority white people yeah uh, were there like any prejudices that you felt like were were, were placed against you like even even in the inner city because yeah. like I know a lot of Liberians that did grow up here like they did even face like prejudices even from like black people yeah exactly. or like uh, other races was, was that like something that you went through was that like, experience for you yeah so um you know like just just growing up around black people you know some some people feel as if like uh the racist people really be the white people but sometimes really be the the black people like, and people don't get that yeah and uh growing up mainly around black people, that's kind of like, that was like the thing, like they would make fun of like the Africans, like, oh, you smell like fufu. Like, man, fufu don't have a smell, you know? So, <laughs> so that was it, was, it was just like small things like that, or like there was like uh, African booty scratcher and stuff, but for the majority, a lot of people, like came from uh, the black people and um, yeah, it was, it was annoying at the time. But then when I got to high school, I would say it was more like, like they they were never around black people to start with, so it was kind of like uh, they had to learn a little bit about Africans and black people and stuff like that. So I would say it was like an ignorance there, but it was kind of like a like an honest ignorance. I would say like they just didn't know as far as like the black people. They were kind of like pushing the agenda to like make fun of us. And now now you see a bunch of black people. They wearing the 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 uh, kente and then they trying to go to Ancestry.com to find out where, where they're from in Africa and stuff like that when not too long ago they was making fun of us, so. Yeah, so it's crazy. Hey, I think we all went through similar experiences, which is, it's, it's wild, man. So your uncle being a pastor, man, I know that was hard. Yeah. Parties, all that, did, were you allowed to like, you know, experience like a lot of your youth or were you like, like, did they have you like really like in the house most of the time? Like, how was you? I mean, I was, I was in the house by, uh, by choice, okay. I was never really like a walker ball <laughs> guy, so you know I was I was inside. Man, all right, that's what's up, man. So, um, how was your dating life? You know, um, yeah, like growing up. I I just got my first girlfriend recently. Bro, <laughs> damn, man. Well, I said I was focused. So you like, wasn't a hobo Joe. No, I was I was I was inside. All right, that's good. That was good. My next question was gonna be like, what what do you think would be like the hardest part about dating a Liberian man? Mm, Liberian man. Yeah. I would say if you're dating a tall librarian man, you'll you'll have trouble because he'll be feeling us all the time. <laughs> all right, all right. So basically that's that that's basically the, the hardest part. That's it. Yeah. Right. So one man, y'all y'all here or y'all go date sure librarian man and say y'all don't have to deal with, <laughs> with big, big egos. With big big egos. Um yeah, man, there, uh, anything, like, you would like to say to the people, you know, like, or, like, how can someone who's watching this right now, a young kid growing up, wanting to play football, um, be inspired? You know? I would say for my young um, librarians, just embrace the culture. Uh, I feel like we're, we're in the country where everyone wants 
you know, it's a push agenda, you know, we all have to be a certain way or we have to all be the same, you know, be proud of who you are, be proud of where you come from. And uh, yeah, just don't lose the culture. Yeah, I mean, pride is another, is another big thing because like sometimes I feel like we struggle with, um, with, with real like bearing pride and really understanding what that really means. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people like they, they, you know, they're July 20, they wait for July 26 to really like, you know, boost or voice how, you know, Liberian they are. Yeah. And then while others, you know, kind of hide away, like what would you say to like the people who you feel are like kind of struggling with that, like that Liberian yeah. pride? Uh, I would say, you know, just surround yourself around other um, Liberians so it's, it's not as hard. I would say just because, you know, being by yourself, People don't understand, and you know sometimes you may need help and may need backup to you know tell tell people how how it is. But yeah, yeah, I feel like that's really important. All right, man. Um, I think we should we should wrap this up. Probably just give a little shout out to Liberian Worldwide, and um, what's it called? Tell the people anything you wanna you wanna do. Yeah, uh, I I appreciate all my people supporting me uh, throughout the years, and there'll be more to come. All right, man. That's a wrap, man. Thank you guys for watching. Our first official interview with Liberians Worldwide. There will be plenty more to come and plenty more superstars to interview. Y'all have a good time, my people. Yeah.